Keto Made Simple for Beginners. Hey everybody, welcome to the Healthy Eats Good Life channel. In this video, I will be breaking down the main points about the ketogenic diet for anyone who is interested in taking it up. I personally follow the keto diet and I can attest to its efficacy, especially in helping me reduce my obsession with bread. Make sure to watch until the end because I will be sharing a lot of important information and simple tips to help you understand keto. Please subscribe to the channel so that we can help you with tips on improving your health and wellness. Now let's get right into the video. What's the keto diet? The keto diet, short for ketogenic diet, is a popular diet that is low carb. It encourages consumption of minimal amount of carbs, mainly from vegetables, and keeps carbs consumption to only 5% of your daily macronutrient consumption. This roughly means limiting your net daily carbohydrate intake to about 20 to 50 grams of carbohydrates per day. The aim of the ketogenic diet is to make you to gradually go into a state of ketosis in which the body has adapted to burning fat for energy instead of burning sugar for energy. Keto proponents have reported success in terms of weight loss, however keto, as with any other diet, can only be successful if adhered to long term. Keto has gained notoriety in the recent past because it has been touted to help people lose weight and help diabetics control their blood sugar levels. One popular actress who has come out to praise the keto diet is Halle Berry, who revealed she has type 1 diabetes and keto has helped her to control it. In practical terms, going on the keto diet means cutting out wheat products like bread, biscuits, cakes, sweets, sugary desserts, sugar, fruit, except strawberries, blackberries, and blueberries, as these have a low glycemic count, honey, rice, pasta, cereals, yam, and sweet potatoes, and other high starchy foods. Low carb natural sweeteners like stevia, monk fruit, and erythritol are allowed on the ketogenic diet. Total daily macronutrients should aim for mainly 70% fat, 5% carb, 25% protein in your daily diet. However, it should be noted that the exact amount of net carbs you need to limit yourself to varies from person to person. Generally speaking, more active individuals tend to require more carbs than those who are less active. A ketogenic diet calls for having a high fat intake. These fats should ideally be from healthy food sources, for example, wild-caught fatty fish, fatty beef, nut butters, avocados, etc. High fat consumption would automatically need to lead to an increase in your total caloric intake. However, if your goal is to lose weight, care should be taken not to consume too many calories in total, as this can slow down the weight loss process. One way to assess whether you are in ketosis is you no longer have cravings for carbohydrates and you tend to not feel hungry. It's always advisable, as with any other diet, to seek the advice of a medical professional prior to starting it, especially for those suffering from chronic illnesses. Foods allowed on the keto diet. There are surprisingly a large number of different food options allowed on the keto diet. Fruits. Most fruits have a high glycemic index and therefore tend to be too high in carbs to add to a keto diet. However, berries are an exception because they are low glycemic, meaning eating a small amount of berries every day will not spike your blood sugar levels. On a keto diet, you can consume a small handful of berries, blueberries, raspberries, strawberries or blackberries, which will give you around 5 to 10 grams of carbohydrates. Fruit is generally not encouraged on the keto diet because if your aim is to keep your carbohydrate intake low, then consuming fruit would use up your daily carb allowance intake quickly. Keto encourages getting your carbohydrates from green leafy vegetable sources, especially for those looking to lose weight. As stated earlier, keto encourages vegetables as the main source for carb intake. This is because you can consume a large amount of most green leafy vegetables and still keep your carb intake low. Aim to consume about 7 cups of vegetables daily on keto. And this serves to keep you feeling full for longer and also helps to reduce cravings for carbs. 
green leafy vegetables like lettuce, spinach, kale, and other vegetables like carrots, beets, cauliflower, and broccoli are also good sources of carbohydrates on keto. For protein, beef, fish, chicken, pork, ham, bacon, eggs, cheese, milk, nuts are all good sources of protein on keto. For fat, healthy fats like avocado oil, olive oil, coconut oil, butter, cream, cheese, ghee or clarified butter, nuts like almonds, peanuts are all good sources of fat for keto. So how do you start keto? You need to track your macronutrient intake. It's important to keep track of your macronutrient intake while on keto. Ideally, you should aim for 70% fat, 5% carbs, and 25% protein in your daily diet as a target. You can start with a limit that's easy for you to achieve and work upwards from there. It should also be noted that everybody is different. Some people achieve tremendous health and weight loss results by maintaining a carb intake of up to 60 grams. If limiting your carb intake to 20 grams per day is your target, it's advisable to say start at 50 or 60 grams and then slowly reduce to 20 grams on a weekly basis. Using an app like Fitness Pal to measure the macronutrient content of each food is a good idea, but if you've used these apps before, you know it can tend to get repetitive and tiresome to log each and every meal into the app on a daily basis. A good alternative to tracking or measuring macros is to use your palm to measure. The rule of three applies. For protein, use three fingers to measure the length of the protein and then put two hands together in a praying manner to measure the thickness. Generally, anything from four to eight ounces of protein is acceptable. For vegetables, just use a handful to measure one portion. Therefore, seven handfuls of lettuce would be your daily intake. Another way would be to eat three handfuls of, of vegetables per meal. For fat, three teaspoons of oil is your limit per meal. As stated earlier, what is adequate or sufficient for one person may not be the same for another. Factors like sex, age, level of physical activity all determine how much food one needs. A bodybuilder would need more protein than say someone who is generally sedentary. Okay, so what are the tips that would help on keto? Number one, include coconut oil, butter or olive oil in your diet. These oils have MCTs or medium chain triglyceride fats which are quickly absorbed or metabolized by the body and utilized for energy or converted into ketones. Be active. Some studies have found that including some type of physical exercise in your daily routine can accelerate the process of getting you into ketosis. While at the same time, being in ketosis can help improve your performance when you work out. Exercising in a fasted state has been known to increase ketone levels. Eat few meals. When we eat, we generally tend to provoke an insulin response. The pancreas produces insulin and this will kick us out of ketosis. The aim is to remain in ketosis for as long as possible. Allowing some time between meals makes achieving this easier. Eat low carb, as already mentioned. Use substitutes like cauliflower rice, almond flour cakes for normal rice and wheat products. But remember, carbs should form only 5% of your daily macronutrient consumption. Increase your consumption of healthy fat like butter and avocados. Consuming these healthy fats can increase your ketone levels and help you to achieve ketosis. So a good strategy would be to combine keto with two meals a day, or even if you want to take it further, you could combine keto with one meal a day diet. Whatever you decide to do, it's important to make it sustainable so you can stick to it long term and see results. If it feels like a punishment, you are unlikely to stick to it. Consume sufficient amounts of protein in your diet. In order to achieve ketosis, it's important to consume sufficient but not excessive amounts of protein. Proteins are important because they supply the liver with amino acids and maintain muscle mass. 
Start your meals with eating your vegetables first, then the protein, and end with the fats. This strategy will ensure you finish your vegetables and keep you feeling full for long and curb cravings. Start slowly and build up gradually. If you find it difficult to start by cutting carbs to just 5%, then start with 20% carb intake and slowly reduce it gradually. Make sure your protein is not lean protein or low fat, but high fat to keep insulin levels low. It's a good idea to add fat to your protein if it's lean, for example, a side of avocado or guacamole to a steak or milk butter on your vegetables to ensure that you reach your required fat macronutrient requirement. Snack on a handful of nuts and some cheese to ensure you feel full or satisfied and prevent cravings. Do not add sugar or sweeteners to your protein. It's best to avoid soy oil, safflower oil, cottonseed oils, as these are genetically modified oils with chemicals in them and they can be highly inflammatory. Not only is, important, is it important to reduce or cut out carbs, but the timing of your meals is key to being successful on the ketogenic diet. Consider combining keto with intermittent fasting if weight loss is your goal. I spoke about this in my video on intermittent fasting, which I'll link at the end. Eat less meals. For instance, preferably skipping breakfast and eat lunch and dinner with only one small healthy snack in between. This doesn't mean you'll be eating pure calories. You can still maintain the same amount of calories. However, it's important to understand that the key to keto is to keep insulin low by eating less frequently to give chance for the insulin levels to go down before your next meal. Bulletproof coffee is black coffee with a teaspoon of butter or coconut oil. It's usually consumed in the morning and helps to curb hunger and cravings. The added fat from the butter or coconut oil helps to give you a satiated feeling so you can fast until around noon. Avoid the temptation to eat snacks throughout the day. Frequent snacking keeps blood glucose up and down and this leads to hunger. Avoid this by adding more fat to your meals to help you feel satiated. If you are eating enough fat in your meals on keto, you will not feel hungry in between meals. During your fasting window, you can drink water, herbal teas, black tea and black coffee or bulletproof coffee or tea as long as you don't add any sweeteners. You can also take your vitamins as long as they don't contain sweeteners during your fasting window. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any more videos about health and wellness, simple healthy recipes for weight loss, mental health and much more. Check out my other videos on intermittent fasting and healthy lifestyle and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.